Hello Year 5, it's Mrs Latcham here. I happen to have at home, because it belongs to my son, a copy of one of the Year 5 Book Above Pay Grade texts. So, I'm going to read it to you. This is a book that I read when I was doing teacher training and I really loved it. So I'm pleased to be introducing you to it. It's called Skellig by an author called David Almond. The critics say, simply brilliant. Other critics have said it's gripping, beautiful and brilliantly written. Everyone is raving about this unforgettable book. The Guardian critic says, touched with a visionary intensity. And Michael Mopergo, another great writer, says David Altam Almond is a very special writer. So, as you read, I'd like you to have a think about some Vipers questions. So you know how this works. This is normally the sort of text that we would read after doing the afternoon register and here are the questions so as we read have a think a retrieval question where does michael find the man an explanation question explain what happened to ernie myers who used to own the house and a vocabulary question what does the estate agent mr stone mean by the phrase see it with your mind's eye now have a think about those questions. We'll pause, you can pause after chapter one and have a chat with an adult at home. The chapters are really short, so those questions relate to chapter one, but I'm gonna read two chapters. Okay, chapter one. I found him in the garage on a Sunday afternoon. It was the day after we moved into Faulkner Road. The winter was ending. Mum had said we'd be moving just in time for the spring. Nobody else was there, just me. The others were inside the house with Dr Death, worrying about the baby. He was lying there in the darkness behind the tea chests in the dust and dirt. It was as if he'd been there forever. He was filthy and pale and dried out and I thought he was dead. I couldn't have been more wrong. I'd soon begin to see the truth about him, that there'd never been another creature like him in the world. We called it the garage because that's what the estate agent Mr Stone called it. It was more like a demolition site or a rubbish dump or like one of those ancient warehouses they keep pulling down at the quay. Stone led us down the garden, tugged the door open and shone his little torch into the gloom. We shoved our heads in at the doorway with him. You have to see it with your mind's eye, he said. See it cleaned with new doors and the roof repaired. See it as a wonderful two-car garage. He looked at me with a stupid grin on his face. Or something for you, lad. A hideaway for you and your mates. What about that, eh? I looked away. I didn't want anything to do with him. All the way round the house it had been the same. Just see it in your mind's eye. Just imagine what could be done. All the way round I kept thinking of the old man, Ernie Myers, that had lived there on his own for years. He'd been dead nearly a week before they found him under the table in the kitchen. That's what I saw when Stone told us about seeing with the mind's eye. He even said it when we got to the dining room and there was an old cracked toilet sitting there in the corner behind a plywood screen. I just wanted him to shut up, but he whispered that towards the end Ernie couldn't manage the stairs. His bed was brought in here and a toilet was put in so everything was easy for him. Stone looked at me like he didn't think I should know about such things. I wanted to get out, to get back to our old house again, but Mum and Dad took it all in. They went on like it was going to be some big adventure. They bought the house. They started cleaning it and scrubbing it and painting it. Then the baby came too early and here we were. Okay, pause there. Have a think about the question. So where does Michael find the man? Can you explain what happened to Ernie Myers using, who used to own the house? And what does the estate agent Mr Stone mean by the phrase, see it with your mind's eye? Press pause. Okay, now you've unpaused and had a chat about those questions. Let's read chapter two. No Vipers questions for this one. I nearly got into the garage that Sunday morning. I took my own torch and shone it in. The outside doors to the back lane must have fallen off years ago and there were dozens of massive planks nailed across the entrance. The timbers holding the roof were rotten and the roof was sagging in. The bits of the floor you could see between the rubbish were full of cracks and holes. 
The people that took the rubbish out of the house were supposed to take it out of the garage as well, but they took one look at the place and said they wouldn't go in, even for danger money. There were old chests of drawers and broken wash basins and bags of cement, ancient doors leaning against the walls, deck chairs with the cloth seats rotted away, great rolls of rope and cable hung from nails, heaps of water pipes and great boxes of rusty nails were scattered on the floor. Everything was covered in dust and spider's webs. There was mortar that had fallen from the walls. There was a little window in one of the walls, but it was filthy and there were rolls of cracked lino standing in front of it. The place stank of rot and dust. Even the bricks were crumbling like they couldn't bear the weight any more. It was like the whole thing was sick of itself and would collapse in a heap and have to get bulldozed away. I heard something scratching in one of the corners and something scuttling about. Then it all stopped and it was just dead quiet in there. I stood, daring myself to go in. I was just going to slip inside when I heard Mum shouting at me. Michael, what are you doing? She was at the back door. Didn't we tell you to wait till we, we were sure it was safe? I stepped back and looked at her. Well, didn't we? She shouted. Yes, I said. So keep out, all right? I shoved the, back the door and it lurched half shut on its single hinge. All right, she yelled. All right, I said. Yes, all right, all right. Do you not think we've got more to worry about than stupid you getting crushed in a stupid garage? Yes. You just keep going out then, right? Sorry. You just keep out then, right? Right, 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 right. Then I went back into the wilderness. We called a garden. And she went back to the flaming baby. Okay, now I know, having read books with you as a class, Cliff, uh, St George, that you're great at asking questions of the text. So what questions do you have after reading up to chapter two? What do you think? 